Soon as you come over, it's over. I'ma lay you down right on my sofa. You drink and me more sash, and me more sash, and me more sash, and me more sash. Tell me what you want, tell me what you need. You got them in more sash and in the sea. You love that OJ mixed with champagne. Make you feel a vibe you can't explain. She fuck with the mimosas. Welcome back, camp fam. It's Key, Kiara, or the Beauty Chameleon, whichever you prefer. And I am back with another episode of Mess and Mimosas. Featuring Danny J. My bad. What's good? What's good? What's good, people? It's my boyfriend, y'all. I got a boyfriend. Even though I told y'all. Yeah, you say it all the time. I say it all the time. My man, my man. <laughs> my man. So, today's episode of Master Mimosas is called Do You Believe in Love at First Sight? I do. <laughs> I named this episode Do You Believe in Love at First Sight because our love story is kind of symbolic or it represents that. I don't personally believe in love at first sight, even though we met and we've been together since we met, but. She wasn't in love at first sight. But I'll go into more details about that later. First, we're gonna get our mimosas popping and our masks popping. Bad boy, us some Bel Air. We're gonna pop the bottle. Yep. Woo. Did you shake it? No, I didn't shake it. I'm gonna uh, open it over top of this just in case. Oh. Just in case this thing explodes. My hands on it. Okay. Oh, I knew it! I knew it, see? I didn't shake it though. I knew it. I did not shake it. Alright, so while he's making our mimosas, give y'all a little tea. Would y'all believe that within the first, was like a month of us being together, I had to break up with him? Because I'll tell y'all in a little bit. But the juice we got is a orange pineapple apple <laughs> cocktail. It does. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, it's not sweet at all. It's the yeah, it's just that's surprising. I thought it was gonna be really sweet. I wonder if it's the juice, right? Not sweet enough, or is it the champagne? Just I kind of want to taste the, it, right? I kind of want to taste the champagne without the juice. That's what we should have done. I was just silly. <laughs> Take it to me. Yeah, the champagne is strong, but it's not, not bad. Yeah, now that I drink this, like take a sip of that. Yeah, definitely sweeter after you drink that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for real. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a charcoal peel off mask. And the reason why I picked this mask is because it actually hurts when you peel it off. <laughs> and to keep with the theme of this episode, since we're talking about love and how much we love each other so much. I gotta go through some pain. <laughs> we both do. We yeah, both are going to do these painful peel off masks. But all right, I'm gonna just read some of the benefits of a charcoal mask. It helps promote clear skin. It deeply cleans the pores. It removes blackheads and whiteheads. And it leaves your skin feeling silky smooth. And it says it's for all skin types. So, you know, dry skin, oily skin. Sometimes love is pain, so. We're gonna go through it and we're gonna get through it. I'm like actually running out of this. I'm scared. It's cold too. Betty. Avoid your eyebrows, I have to tell you that, and your facial hair, okay? okay. So, 
Daddy. Yes. <laughs> Do you believe in love at first sight? Don't think about us. Don't think about our relationship. Think about before you met me. Did you believe in love at first sight? Like, did you think that was a thing? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I know people who've been together from like first meeting each other and stuff. Like from mm. school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Who still got together and shit. Oh, wow. I don't know anybody who, I guess, met the love of their life and was like, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Even though we've been rocking, like, we've been rocking since we met. But I would say that I halfway don't believe in it because I didn't fall in love with him when I met him. But when we met, it ended up being love. So I kind of believe in it, but it's like a... A weird way around it like I don't just believe you meet somebody and you can yeah. fall in love I don't think that's possible I don't know that's just me I think it's possible but it's rare I think it's rare very rare because like you're saying in love like that's like, how you strong, know like, yeah you know like how you know like, you I can know see how somebody there. wouldn't believe it yeah that why it's, it's rare but I do think it's possible man. so did you fall in love with me when you first met me the day you I saw wouldn't. me I wouldn't say I was in love. I was just deeply in awe. It's mesmerized. I'm not beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see her face at first. You didn't? No, you was turned around. I just knew for some reason that. I was cute? You I mean you just stood out basically in the room. Okay. To me. Okay. Even without seeing me. Even like, without seeing you. Like, you was turning around taking pictures like how you was facing the other way. Mm -hmm. And then I was just looking around. What if I was, I was like butt ugly? But you wasn't. <laughs> I just knew. I just knew. <laughs> Whatever. He just knew. I guess. So Obviously I was right. Yeah. Anyways, I guess we can talk about our love story a little bit. He does believe in love at first sight. I halfway do. We met on September 21st, 2018. We met at this photography event, and the photography event was hosted by Ty, yeah, so I homie, you know. Oh boy! And so I was there shooting in Monet Amour original pieces. That's one of my friends, her brand, and he was there. He just told us about the event. Said come through. She was like, "Shit, we are already dressed up and shit." So. Why not? It was a dope event. It was, um, like I said, Definitely it was a was. photography event. This photographer named, was it the Hot Photographer? Did he put us together to take that picture? Yeah. Is it pronounced Hot? Hot. I, look, I don't know how it's pronounced, but the Hot or the Hot <laughs> Photographer, he pretty much just kind of signaled us to come together and take yeah, pictures together. It was real together. random. Too. So random. We were, I don't even think we matched. Like, you had on like a white suit with like red. No, yeah, we didn't. And I had on like silver and pink. It was whatever. But anyway. Like he put us together for some reason. And so we're taking pictures. And I'm looking at him while we're taking these pictures. And honestly, I'm looking at his lips because I like lips. Like I was looking at you too. <laughs> I had my shades on. So he had glasses on, so I couldn't see where his eyes was at. But I'm modeling, so I'm like in his face anyway because I'm like acting in a sense but I'm looking at him and I'm like his lips is pretty juicy but he looks like a child <laughs> he looks like a child I thought he was 21 when I first met him and that automatically made me not look at him as if he was like a potential dating person like I was just like all right whatever he's a child so we exchanged numbers on some like let's do business he was like yeah we're gonna need models for videos and da, da, da. And I'm like sure why not but whole time I'm like fuck out of here this, this child I'm not about to be in his music videos because he's a child like no so just didn't turn me down <laughs> I did so what I think we might have text or FaceTime that night and you know he asked each other's age blah 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 he tells me he's 28 he's 29 now but we dated for about eight eight nine months before we decided to make it official so we're in a bed in the middle of the night after his birthday and we're talking and we're basically just like why aren't we together 
let's just do it. So I'm really big on communication and throughout the time we were dating, like from the time we met to the time we made it official, I would stress to him how I need open communication, I need honesty, I need just realness. I need you to be real no matter how painful the truth might be, I just need you to be honest with me. So that way, I know I could trust you. I could trust you 100% if you are comfortable with telling me the hard things. <sighs> Some people aren't so great at communication and you have to be able to teach, you have to be willing to be patient with people and give chances. So like maybe like two weeks after we made it official, so we're in May, I go through his phone. I'm a girl, that's what we do. We do shit like go through phones. I have I didn't go through his phone the whole time we were dating because that wasn't my man. I'm not gonna go through your phone because that's your business. But I also asked him to be honest with me. I asked him to let me know if you meet somebody that you are possibly interested in talking to them. So that way I know, you know, you're not just fully focused on me. It's, you got other options and I'll let you know. I'll do the same for you. Like I said, two weeks later, I went through this phone and <laughs> this man, he's an up and coming star. But right now, he's just Danny J right now. He ain't no celebrity. So I feel like what I found was from fans in a sense like or girls that just felt like all right he about to, he gonna blow up so i need to make sure i got my little in so i went through his phone and i found nude pictures and videos of two girls but i found them i found these pictures and videos i found them in may the exchange that he had with these girls were from like february March or April like one of those months or one girl was in February one girl was in March don't really know full details like I don't know dates or whatever but he was texting these girls while we were dating it didn't happen when we were official so that's what made me give him another chance because we weren't official it's not like he cheated on me but he cheated on my whole communication thing I told you tell me just tell me did. but it's okay Sorry, baby. it's all right it's all right i just wanted i wanted to be able like i said to fully trust somebody and he kind of messed that trust up very early on in our official relationship but i didn't break up with him at that point so fast forward maybe a week later his job does like an annual trip yeah, go on a trip um for like two to three days uh -huh. they pay for everything food room board yeah so, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So we use this trip as an opportunity for him and his partner and manage to shoot like some of their music video for another song on a beach. So his brother's girlfriend is recording so she's being a videographer doing her thing. I'm doing like behind the scenes so I'm trying to get like boomerangs and other little things they can use as like promotion. But I'm doing it on his phone. I have his phone. Let me rewind a little bit. After I found the nudes the first time, he put my fingerprint on his phone. He gave me full access to his situation and that is another reason why I was like, all right, I could trust him and again, this was from when we wasn't even together. So, all right, I'm mad, but I'm, I can get over this. It's not that serious. So, I'm on his phone doing boomerangs, doing the behind the scenes stuff and something in me, while we're shooting this, tells me to go to his Instagram messages because the first time I went through the phone, I only went through the, <laughs> I only went through the text messages. I didn't go through the Instagram messages. So I don't know why I felt like in that moment, I should be looking through. I got his phone. Let me just look through this right now. I'm on Instagram. Let's look. So I'm on Instagram in his messages and I find another exchange that pissed me off pretty much. Telling some girl how he was gonna pick her up from work. That's what I remember. This girl was getting off work at one point in time or something. He was offering to pick her up. Now, he says that nothing went past that. He never picked her up from work, whatever, whatever. Again, this exchange was from like February or March of the same year. We didn't become officially boyfriend and girlfriend until May. So for me, I felt like, okay, I can get over this, but I believe in signs. I'm very big on signs. And 
For me, I'm like, yo, we only been together for like a month. What the fuck? I'm finding all this shit within two, three, four weeks of us being together. Imagine that. That shit was on that trip. I don't even know how that shit even, like, even popped up. I don't know. It didn't pop up. Like, I went looking. I did go look for it. No, but I had deleted that. Oh, okay. And that was the thing. Like, after the first thing I found, his sister gave him advice, like, Whatever you got, just delete it. Like, if it's not important, if you're not really talking to these girls, whatever the case is, just delete all delete all the evidence of anything. That's the smart thing to do. So I don't have nothing else to find. But he didn't delete this this message. I did. Or you did delete it. I or he thought he deleted it, but it didn't delete. Anyways, he didn't delete it. I found it. And for me, like I said, if I would have found it in the first time, like the first time I went through his phone, if I would have found it then, we would have broke up. But the fact that I found it in a separate occasion, it made me feel like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? Should I not be with this man? What? I don't know. That day, I had a conversation with him, and I told him, for one, we didn't even make it official the way I really wanted it to be official. I wanted it to be asked. Like, I wanted somebody to ask me to be their girlfriend, like the, you know, like the good old days. And me and him kind of just, like, decided, like, let's just do it. Like... I want to be your girlfriend, you want to be my boyfriend, let's just be together. So for me, I was like, all right, well, we ain't even do it the right way anyway. You ain't even asked me to be your girlfriend anyway. So F it, we done. Like, So we in the hotel room, this man is going through it. And I'm just like, do it, yo. I don't care. I'm feeling that shit. I don't care. I don't, did you cry? I don't know. Did you cry a little bit? I did. A little, shed a little tear? I think I did. I think I did. I think he did a little bit. I gave you that one. I think you did. Yeah. Because he was a little scared. Because I was dead serious. Again, big on signs. This is the second time within two weeks. And we only been together for like three weeks. Why am I finding all this stuff now? I told him it's a wrap. I got I to gotta break up with you. Because. On a vacation. On vacation. On a vacation, bro. I'm like. And I was, I was really fuck. going through an internal conflict. I was like, damn. I don't want to break up with him because it's, it's some old shit. But, nah. So, Kylie told him, I, I gotta do this for myself to make sure that I'm being true to myself and you gonna have to work. Sometimes you gotta scare them, ladies, for them to really know you ain't the one to play with and I'm not the one to play with. Don't play with me with the read. So, anyways, fast forward to September 21st, 2019. We do all this healing and talking and bonding and getting back to our trust and all of that and on this date a year later from the date we met Danny does some extraordinary things for me he does some things that I feel like no man has ever done for me he provides me with security and he provides me with some type of safety like I feel like okay I can trust him again we have a nice dinner Fire. <laughs> we have like a nice yeah. a nice anniversary in a sense it's the anniversary at this point of oh, the day we met, yeah, day we met. Mm -hmm. he finally asked me to be a girlfriend and that's when we re-officially became official whatever <laughs> so the day we met is our anniversary yeah official anniversary. official anniversary yeah. i kind of want to discuss like random details of our relationship as far as work so when I first met him, I was celibate. But but first, let me tell y'all a little bit. Celibacy, I actually realized, is not what I was practicing. I was practicing abstinence. I was calling it celibacy because I thought that's what it was called. So the definition of celibacy is abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. Oh. And I'm not abstinent from, from marriage. Like, I want to get married. So... I was telling people I was celibate and whole time that's not what I was. So I when you celibate you can't get married either. When you celibate you are you don't want to get married, I guess, and you don't want to have sexual relations. You just oh, want to have a connection man. with God. I think it's more so like celibacy is for like nuns, like people like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's it's right. abstinence. What I was practicing is abstinence. Abstinence is abstaining from something in particular for however much time necessary. So it could be a lifetime or it could be for the time that you set for yourself. So for me, I was practicing abstinence until I was in a committed relationship. Prior to meeting him, I had been abstinent since December of 2017. So when I first met him, 
and we started dating that was the first like one of the first things i told him like i'm not having sex with nobody until i am in a committed situation and i know i can trust you like how did you feel when i first told you i was abstinent like i said like i had that feeling like he was like he was worth it okay like there's a certain type of person that make you do things that you're not normally would do right or right except that's true or wait for right you know what i'm saying right if you don't feel like it's worth it i was worth it of course. I was worth the wait, huh? 100%. 100% worth the wait. So just a little detail about that, because I'm an open book, so this man has to tolerate me telling on our business to an extent. <laughs> I'm not going to tell y'all every single thing, but I'm going to tell y'all some things, because like I said, I'm transparent, and that's just what I am. We met September 21st, 2018. We didn't have sex for the first time until September 21st, 2019. So even when we made it official in May, huh? Uh, nothing. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> so even though we made it official in May, I wasn't ready to have sex with him in May. So well, exactly 365 days later from the time we met, he waited. And mind you, any man will wait if he feel like she's worth it. Any man. You see what he said? He said man. Not little boy. Any man will wait. Trust man. Me. It's worth the wait. And then after that first time, I've been pretty hooked. <laughs> I personally feel like I've never been the type to really like care about sex. Before me to him, this is how I felt. <laughs> it was cool. It's all right. It's whatever. Sex is a little overrated in my opinion. It ain't all that good because I never experienced sex that was like amazing. I've literally had like the best sex of my life with this man. Like, <laughs> almost on the verge of tears, sex. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I've heard of people saying, oh, I've cried. When you cry during sex, that's me. It's so amazing. I'm like, shit, I've never experienced no damn tear jerking sex. But this man really be having me like, damn, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is why people like sex. Like, <laughs> so it's one of, one of my favorite things to do with him is have sex with him. I'm going to have sex with him tonight. That's my first time hearing that. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, we didn't necessarily not do freaky stuff. <laughs> we did do freaky stuff, we just... I did freaky stuff. I let him do freaky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess, I don't know. What else, babe? What else about us? Well, I know as far as me, I never been really good with expressing myself or with communication period, but I would say with her because she is very communicative. She pulls like that out of me. It makes me want to talk more, makes me want to express more and shit, you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, like I didn't talk about nothing. I used to hold so much shit inside, bro. Couldn't be with me doing that. I so talk. much. <laughs> I, I talk. I talk too much sometimes. I wouldn't say too much, but you talk enough mm -hmm. to make somebody want to engage in the conversation. Right? Mm -hmm. well, I like it too. I like it. You like what? Being able to talk. Yeah. Good. Being able to communicate and express myself, and you know what I'm saying. Say what I want to say. Say what I need to say. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Well, I'm happy. I'm in love. Are you? Better be. I'm in love too. And I'm in happy love. Like I've been in love before. He's been in love before. But it's a very different just love way, when it's drama free and it's just healthy. I don't know. I just never been like that. I never like that. You are chill. It just be that should be too much for me. Yeah, you're really chill. You give me the vibe like if we was arguing all the time, we would shut down. And then I'm nonchalant too, like I'm very so like, nonchalant and I have been I punched him in the face. Hey. What you got going on? I'm um, a clutch. You punched me in the face. Did I say that? That's what it sounded like you said. Oh, I don't think I said that. <laughs> that was what it sounded like you said. Did she say that, y'all? Damn, I don't know. It sounded like you said you would punch me in the face for, for being what? national. If it was arguing. Ah, <clears throat> uh, we maybe. ain't gonna do that abusive. No, shit. no, 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 no. We not, we not. But I might feel like I want to punch him in the face because I'm very passionate and. 
when you give me nonchalant, that makes me angry. So, but we haven't. I had, can't help that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, very chill. So it is what it is. And I think opposites attract. I like that he be chilling because I don't be chilling sometimes. So, like I said, I'll come for him and he'll be like, "Girl, did you what? Chill, chill out." He always telling me to relax too. That shit irritates me. I do that on purpose though. That shit irritates me. I do that, I do that me. on purpose. I know it irritates he me. He know that shit get on my nerves. I get it's mad nice. when he tell me to relax. I'm calm. I'm calm unless you be snapping on my ass. Because I be calm. Like I feel like don't tell me to do something that I'm not doing. Or like he tells me to relax. I be sitting here like this. Or I might say something to you. Yeah, you may say That's something. That's the thing. I, I'll say something to you like, babe, exactly. babe, can you do this? Or babe, can you not do this? Or babe, can't... Whatever. Whatever I'm saying. And he'll be like, babe, relax. relax. Okay. And I'll be like, <laughs> I'm calm. Relax. Because you telling me to relax and I'm relaxed already. Now you're about to make me turn up because <laughs> you're going to tell me to relax when I'm already relaxed. Why now I'm going I'm to give you a reason to tell me to relax. <laughs> just peel my stuff off. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, y'all. I think I think we need to peel these masks off. What, what, what you say, babe? No, you can say that. Say it out loud. <laughs> say it out loud for the people. I have never ate so much pussy in my life. Hmm. Than with this girl. You complaining or? No, I'm not complaining. Okay. No, better not. Never, never complain. <laughs> I was just saying, like, for me, I don't like sucking dick at all. I can count on less than one hand how many dicks have been in my mouth. And <laughs> period. I just don't like it. It's, it's a very submissive act. And for some reason, I want to do it to him. Like, all the time. I just feel like once you find that man that deserves it, that's when you feel like, all right, I get why girls like suck a dick. Like, I get it. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Prior to I do want to add that we prayed for each other. We did. I honestly love it. Like, we haven't had no, like, yeah, we this haven't. is the shit I, I pray for, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, a like, healthy, happy, positive relationship. Like, we have, we have had disagreements. But just because you disagree don't mean you have to argue. You gotta argue. It. Like, no. you just simply agree to disagree, and that's it. Argument is disagreeing angrily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can disagree regularly. Regularly, like, like why we gotta disagree without why argument. we gotta be beefing? We don't gotta be right. Beefing, right. You can disagree and then be cool like the next second, mm -hmm. literally. Yep. And that's all I be want. I don't. I don't want to argue. Yeah. Um. So that was your prayer. But yeah, coming. somebody I could you know disagree without arguing. On one other argument, you know what I'm saying? Somebody to bring some extra shit out of me. Stuff you need to be born. Somebody I can grow with. So that was like a short version of his prayer for me and manifesting his woman. I will say I feel like I manifested my man. I manifested him. I won't give y'all full details of my prayer because I actually want to save that for another episode of Masked Mimosas eventually. Ooh. It's going to be called Kiera's Prayer. But that prayer requires a ring on my finger. On this, this left finger Damn. right here. That that episode requires, it requires me to have a ring on my finger. And I don't want to prematurely give y'all my prayer if it didn't work. We're not married yet. For real, we're not. We ain't married yet. we boyfriend and girlfriend. This, this is, I love him. I do love him. But he is not my husband. I cannot call him my husband. Future husband. Future husband. You can call me that though. I don't know for a fact yet. But we'll see. That's fine. I was going to wait until we were married. But I think I can give it to y'all when he proposes. And y'all you know we always talk about Sierra's prayer. Give us the prayer sis. But Sierra ain't giving us the prayer. But Kiara, I want to give y'all the prayer. Eventually. Um, I also wrote a separate list. I wrote a list of qualities I wanted to have as a wife. You can't ask God to bless you with things till you're ready for them. He's not or you can ask God for whatever you want to ask God for is what I would say. But I don't feel like God will give them to you until you're ready for them. So on top of asking for these qualities I wanted in a husband 
I had to ask God to prepare me to be a wife. And one of the things, again, I have a long list, but I'm not going to give you all those details. But one of the things on my list that I specifically want to mention is patience. I, I lack patience. So I know that when you're in a marriage, patience is important. So now we're going to peel these masks off. My face tight as shit. Gee. Mine is too. I'm ready for it to come off. Your turn. I said, rip it off. I ripped it off me. Go ahead. Excuse me. This is easy. Because you ain't do as much as me. I feel like I had all this stuff on my face. You did have me. Your face was more covered. Covered. Than yeah. How your face feel? Uh, no. How the? It feels like I just ripped something off my face. Yeah, I mean, I feel relief. Yeah, yes, definitely. Because that should be so tight. Mm -hmm. nice. Thanks for tuning in to my channel, guys. This concludes another episode of Mask and Mimosas. Yep. If you want to get some good topics of conversation, watch her Mask and Mimosas. If you haven't watched it, start from the beginning. Yes. Everything is a good topic. Everything topics is topics good. that people need to hear about yes. that relates to a lot of people. I'm trying to get people comfortable with having hard conversations, y'all. Or just uncomfortable, weird conversations. They're not so weird once you just talk about it. Like, yeah, you just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. So, Drop comments yeah. for topic ideas that y'all want to hear me talk about. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel, please. Subscribe, subscribe, Once I get to 100 subscribe. subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway Ooh. with my brand, Beauty Chameleon. Ooh. Beauty Chameleon. You know? I got my shirt on. I'm at. Follow us. Yeah, yes. follow us. Follow, follow our, our page. Uh, couples page, Danny's Key. Danny's Key. Danny's Key. You know. All right. Have a good one. Cheers. But no, you don't got no <laughs> drink. It's a sip in It's a sip in here. We'll sip it then. I'm a, I'm a goat, babe. Goat. We got another bottle <laughs> to pop. Nah, better than though. No, I like it. It's very, it's very good. I'm a little lit. I'm a little, I'm a little bit. I'm serious. He's more of the goofy one, but he also has a very serious side, and I also have a goofy side. So it's a balance. So yeah, that's that. That's us.